What's up everybody, it's Parker with BI Elite. I have an awesome video today showing you how to create this dynamic moving x-axis. I've actually created this exact same video a couple years ago, but it was using a combination of an R visual and direct query. And just a couple days ago, I realized you don't need direct query or R at all in order to accomplish this. You can do this on an imported data set using just a little bit of simple DAX. So as you can see, we have this moving x-axis that's consistently moving to the right. So you see we're on uh, now just starting June 2013 and now the days are adding on and days are falling off on the left side of the graph. So we are able to set a specific uh, start date. So let's say I want to start on, um, let me go ahead and pause this or turn that off. So we can set a start date, let's say July 16, 2014. We can set a date range from seven days to 90 days. Let's say we want a really wide range. And actually, give me one second, I'm going to turn that off and change our x-axis to be continuous instead of categorical, but we'll get to that in just a little bit. So continuous. So now we have our 90 day date range and you see our data is flowing. So now we have this nice 90 day moving range. So this is really cool. I'm gonna show you how to set up all of these features um, in a sample file. So let's go ahead and hop on over there. So here is my blank file. I don't have a lot of the things that are necessary in order to set this up. So first thing we're going to do is we're gonna create a basic line chart. And this line chart will have my order date and my axis. And let's just do, um, I have a calculate column total price, which is basically just total sales. So use whatever metrics you want. Uh, just a quick note. This is all data coming from a database that I've made publicly accessible to students of my BI Elite training courses. So if you do wanna follow along with me uh, using this specific data, make sure you check out the Power BI Beginner course, which is available on the BI Elite website. The link is in the description. So we have this line chart. It's looking pretty nice. The first step that we actually need uh, to accomplish in order to set up this moving x-axis is we need a disconnected date table. It needs to have no relationship with these uh, with this sales table that we just created this line chart from. So in order to do that, let's go to modeling, new table, and I will create a table called date and set it equal to calendar. Uh, if I can spell it right, calendar. And you need to provide a start date and an end date to calendar. So I simply want to take the minimum of my order date column, which is what I just used to create the x-axis in this visual. And then I want my maximum of my calendar to be the max of our order date column. So basically, whatever dates are available in our order date column, we want to create a calendar of all dates until then. And let's see what that looks like. So our new date table looks like this. That looks nice. Let's just get rid of the time because we don't need that. So I'm clicking on the column and changing the format to remove that time. Wonderful, that looks good. So now let's go ahead and throw in that new column into a slicer. And it will by default give us a between date slicer, which is perfect. It's wonderful. And since it doesn't have a relationship, that does nothing as of right now, which is perfect. We don't want to do anything. So next, I'm going to create a what if parameter to allow you to have a date range or a day range that um, the user will be able to select. I want to show uh, all of these dates within seven days or 90 days. So if we create a day range, what if parameter, now let's say we want the minimum range to be seven days, maximum range to be 90 days increment by one, and it already has this checked add slicer to page. So when we click OK, it is going to create this day range slicer, and it will allow you to select a value from seven to 90. So that's perfect. Okay, so now let's create our measure that's actually going to drive the filtering of this visual to only show us days within our day range. So on my measures table, I'm going to create a new measure and this measure I'm going to call sales, sales within range. And simply for now, I'm just going to take the sum of my total price column, which is just my total sales at this point. And I'm going to throw that in here. 
And you see right now it still uh, has no effect with the date slicers or anything. I'm now just showing my total sales. So a couple steps in order to achieve what we want. Let's create a variable in order to grab the date that we are currently filtered down to in our visual. So I'm gonna call that visual date. And this is the max of our order date, which is the uh, field in our X axis. And I also wanna create a variable for our slicer date, which I wanna say the min of our date, date, our date column from our date table. So if you think about it, visual date is the date that you're basically on in your visual. The slicer date is the minimum available uh, date from our date table, which is making up our slicer. And then finally, we want to return an if statement. And basically just a little bit of logic here. If our visual date is greater than or equal to our slicer date and which is and and visual date is less than slicer date plus day range and uh, we have this nice day range value that is created by default when we create that what if parameter so if it falls in that range of dates we want to return our sum of total price which is our total sales else we want to return blank and that's really all we have to do. So you see our, um, our visual has already been filtered down. Our day range is on seven right now. So we see that we're only showing day, uh, data from January 1st through January 7th, that seven day range. So just to run this back by you, we wanna return a result if the visual date is greater than or equal to our slicer date and the visual date is less than slicer date plus day range. So it has to be from the minimum of your uh, date value in your slicer up until the number of days that you want to show. And then the final idea that really tops this trick off is using this play axis slicer in order to iterate through those days. And in order to get that play axis slicer, simply click the three dots, import from marketplace and search for play and play axis dynamic slicer, add that to your report. When you do so, you'll see this play button. Just create one and take your date date field and you just want the, um, the date value of that. And really all you have to do at this point is click play. So that's gonna click play and it's gonna iterate through and you'll see your data starting to move. That's wonderful. So a couple of tips here in order to make this truly um, polished, click on your um, your play axis, click on the formatting options and animation settings. Auto start's good, loop is good, and I'm gonna change this to 500 milliseconds because I want my graph to look a little bit quicker. So that's going through pretty quickly, and let me pause that. I wanna make this day range a little bit bigger so it's not too hectic. And uh, yeah, that looks really nice. So one thing you'll notice when I change some of those settings, it looked really weird, like that time is showing uh, like a time zone and it's really way too small. So one trick is to come to our date table. We will create a new column, and this is gonna be the text representation of that date. And I've been getting this error message for the last couple days. It's just my Power BI. Don't worry about it, it has nothing to do with this trick. So I'm gonna call this date text, and set it equal to format, my date column, and I'm gonna give it the month slash day slash year, 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 year format. So this is basically just the text version of that date. And that looks nice. The only thing else we have to do is we need to sort this column by our date because sorting by text will actually create a different sorting. Wonderful. And now let's uh, end that and use our new date text inside our play axis slicer. And we can make it a little bit bigger so it fits, and that's wonderful. So that's pretty much all we need right there. We have a wonderful working, moving x-axis. I'll give you one more little trick here. Um, I have this really cool seven-day rolling average calculation, so I can throw that in, but you see my date range is, is kind of weird at this point. Um, my seven-day rolling average isn't filtered down to my specific date range. You can actually see that the, um, the sales, that light blue is actually moving. That's, that's actually pretty cool. 
but in order to filter down the entire visual down to just my selected date range, we want to go to sales within range in my filter pane. And firstly, let's turn this off. Um, go to sales within range. Sorry, I need to turn that off. Actually, I'm going to turn off that auto start. It's actually something I don't want on. So click on your visual sales within range that measure with our logic. Click on is not blank and apply filter. And now the entire visual is filtered down to just what we want to show in that date range. And I'm going to make these shapes a little bit bigger, a little thicker so that we can see. And now that looks really nice. Let's click play one more time to see what we've done. And we're able to iterate through the selected date range and basically just have this nice moving graph that kind of moves on its own without any interaction necessary from a user. So this is really cool. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did remember my old trick on this exact same topic, you'll realize that this is so much easier and takes way less time and effort in order to uh, get this done. So if you want to check out this data and, and connect to it yourself, make sure you check out the Power BI Beginner course on the BI Elite training portal. The link is down in the description to that training portal. And uh, make sure you check it out there. It's really great value, a lot of great stuff to learn from that course. So if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video.